I greet you, our beloved candidates, and welcome you to the next lesson of English. Today, we're going to learn something new. I understand, and I'm sure you will like it. Before we handle today's lesson, we need to do corrections for the previous exercise. Okay, corrections for activity 13. And this activity, you were required to change the sentences you had been given to if three. These sentences were given in if one. Um, the first, uh, the first sentence was, if Kakaile passes the examination, he will be promoted. That is if one. You were required to change that sentence to if three. You needed to note that in if three, you must have a past perfect tense in the if clause and a future perfect past in the main clause. So when we change this sentence, to the uh, to if three, we shall have the answer as if Kakaire had passed the examination, he would have been promoted. The answer appears like that. Get the correct spellings of each word. Remember, you are required to change to if three, meaning you must be having the word if. Leave alone uh, the other construction of using had. Uh, we leave that, we come to number two. Uh, the question was, the teacher will forgive you if you apologize to her. You are supposed to change that to if three. In our number two, we have if in the middle of the sentence. So when, we, uh, when you are given if in the middle of the sentence, you need to maintain it in your answer. We should construct our answer having if in the middle of the sentence. So the answer should be, the teacher would have forgiven you if you had apologized to her. We come to number three, the, uh, the sentence reads, if the guests come, I shall dine with them. That sentence is in if one. When we change it to if three, we must have uh, a past perfect tense in the if clause and the future perfect present, uh, sorry, the future perfect past in the main clause. So we must have the answer as if the guests had come, I would have dined with them. You note that we have had come. Had come makes that sentence uh, a past perfect. And then would have dined makes it a future perfect past. We proceed to another instruction. You had been given another instruction, and this instruction uh, reads rewrite uh, the sentences beginning if. You are required to rewrite the sentences beginning if. And the first sentence under this instruction was, the police didn't have handcuffs. The police did not have handcuffs. They did not arrest the thief. You need to note that uh, the noun, the police, is a plural subject. So it must take a pronoun they. That's why we have they in the second clause. So when we join the uh, the two, uh, beginning with if, we must have if three. Why? It is a rejected condition. The condition is rejected. The condition is unfulfilled. The police did not have handicaps. That is the condition. What is the result? They did not arrest the thief. So we have our unfulfilled condition. The condition of uh, arresting the thief was not fulfilled. So we shall have the answer as 
If the police had had handcuffs, they would have arrested the thief. Uh, you need to take a note of had had. The first had makes the sentence past perfect. The second had is the past participle form of the verb have. So, whenever you're joining sentences in this if, and you discover that the main verb in the if clause, okay, the main verb in the condition is have, you will automatically have had had, as our answer states. We had another question in this form, and uh, uh, it reads, I did not know the answer. I did not raise my hand. I'm sure uh, one cannot raise one's hand if one does not know the answer. So here, consider the condition and then the result. Not knowing the answer, not raising the hand. I did not know the answer. I did not raise my hand. So what should be the answer? I know you answered it. The answer should be, if I had known the answer, I would have raised my hand. We proceed to uh, this, uh, the last instruction for this. Here you are required to rewrite the sentences below, beginning had. Remember, when you're beginning with had, you are using if three without the word if. So the first sentence for this case was, my cow did not give enough milk. I did not sell any milk to you. Not. We shall not repeat the word milk in our construction. Are we together? So the answer should be, had my cow given enough milk, I would have sold some to you. I'm sure you got that one right as well. Let's have a look at the last question. And it is, the animals did not die. The farmer fed the animals very well. Okay, so uh, here, uh, since the farmer fed the animals very well, they did not die. So what would happen? In if three we shall say, uh, if the farmer, if, had the farmer, had the farmer not fed the animals very well, they would have died. Because the farmer fed the animals very well, they did not die. Had the farmer not fed the animals very well, they would have died. I thank you uh, for doing the activity. I encourage you to always write neatly. I welcome you to the next lesson. And uh, today we are learning about the usage of unless. Dear candidates, you need to note that unless means if not. Those dots you see between if and not represent a subject that you put in a sentence. Of course, when you use unless, the subject must be there. And like you say, unless Jane goes to school. That sentence means if Jane does not go to school, we have if, then where there is Jane is where we have put the dots. So we have uh, an, an example of a sentence here showing how unless replaces if and the negative word in the if clause. So here it is, if you don't work hard, you won't succeed in life. Well, we have taken note of the words you, if, and don't. You know, uh, with, when we're using uh, if, automatically, we are free to use it in uh, positive sentences and negative sentences. So when we replace this sentence with unless, we shall have it as Unless you work hard, that phrase, unless you work hard, means if you don't work hard. That not is 
embedded in the word unless. So uh, we have that sentence as unless you work hard, you won't succeed in life. Meaning, if you don't work hard, you will not succeed in life. Okay, we proceed and not that we use unless to say what will happen or not happen if something else does not happen or if a certain condition is not fulfilled. Okay, we have uh, examples. I understand uh, you were at you are times required to rephrase or rewrite sentences using unless. Here it is. You are required to rewrite the following sentences using unless at the beginning. Okay, the first example reads, If Abel does not pay attention, he will not pass the exercise. If Abel does not pay attention, he will not pass the exercise. You need to get the meaning uh, of that sentence. After getting the meaning, you can put in unless directly without making any mistake. We know that unless will take away if and the not. Unless will take away if and not. Remember, you cannot say unless Abel does. That would be wrong. Does affects the verb. Does affects the verb in this case. And the verb will change to the present, uh, to the present simple form where we add s to it. And the answer here uh, should, should not uh, disturb you. Remember, unless is, uh, is used in what you would call the if clause. This time it is the unless clause. The condition. I hope you have taken note of that. So the answer should be, unless Adele pays attention, he will not pass the exercise. That one means that if Abel does not pay attention, he will not pass the exercise. Unless Abel pays attention, he will not pass the exercise. We can as well use uh, unless in the course or in the middle of that sentence. There we shall say, Abel will not pass the exercise unless unless he pays attention. That will be our answer. We need to have a look at the second example for this case. And our second example reads, I shall not control the running water if I don't plant more trees. I shall not, con I shall not control the running water if I don't plant trees. There you, you are required to begin unless. Remember, unless should be followed by a condition. What is a condition there? Dear candidates, boys and girls, what is the condition there? Uh, we have, uh, I should not control the running water if I don't plant more trees. So you will discover that a condition is planting more trees. If I don't do that, if I don't plant more trees, I shall not control the running water. Meaning, when I use unless at the beginning of that sentence, I will get the last clause or the last sentence in our construction and bring it after unless. So where there is if, the phrase or the part of the sentence following if is the one that will follow unless. So there, remember if must not appear in our answer and then not. So we shall have the answer as unless I plant more trees, I shall not control the running water. Unless I plant more trees, I should not control the running water. We have a look at number three. Number three is also a clear one. Aha, uh -huh. can we try it? 
Dear candidates, try that. If we mulch our gardens, our crops will grow well. I know you are there at home. As some of you are practicing agriculture, you're growing crops. Okay, if you mulch, if you mulch your garden, your crops will automatically grow well. Uh -huh. Use unless. Remember, in the sentence that is positive, we need to be smart and try to have the negative idea before we can introduce unless. Can't we first change that to negative before we introduce unless? Yes, we can. What will the answer be? Remember, the sentence is, if we mulch our gardens, our crops will grow well. What will happen if we don't mulch our gardens? If we don't mulch our gardens, our crops will not grow well. Uh -huh. Having got the negative part of it, there you can bring unless. And so the answer must be, unless we mulch our gardens, meaning if we don't mulch our gardens, yes, what will happen? Our crops will not grow well. Unless we mulch our gardens, our crops will not grow well. If we mulch our gardens, our crops will grow well. When you bring unless, it brings a negative idea. It brings a negative idea. We have that as our answer. Uh, beloved candidates, I know where you are. You can form your own sentences there in if, particularly if one. Try them wherever you are. Form them. Use unless in those sentences. Remember to note the meaning. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. It is very clear. If Chantel does not receive an invitation card, she will not attend the party. Yes, Chantel will not attend the party if she does not receive an invitation card. You are required to begin unless there. So we shall have unless. Unless Chantel... Uh -huh. Chantel is one, remember, and we have does not. Meaning the verb will be affected. So we shall have, unless Chantel receives an invitation card, she will not attend the party. Here is our answer. Unless Chantel receives an invitation card, she will not attend the party. We come to number five. We come to number Five. Number five is simple. We can read it together. Uh-huh. I'm waiting for you. The farmers will feed their animals well. That is the first sentence. The next sentence, they will get quality milk. You know, if you don't feed your animals very well, you will not get quality milk. When you use unless there, <laughs> what is... Uh, what is a condition and what is a result? A condition is feeding the animals well. If you do that, what will result? They will, uh, you will get getting quality milk. So we say, uh -huh, first try, that, try if in that sentence. If you feed, if the farmers feed their animals well, they will get quality milk. Uh -huh. You can first try to have that sentence in the negative form, in the negative part of if. What will it be? If the farmers don't feed the animals well, they will not get quality milk. Yes, you can use unless there. Use it. Uh -huh. Unless the farmers feed the animals well, they will not get quality milk. We have our answer here. Unless the farmers feed the animals well, they will not get quality milk. 
I, I, I remember telling you that we can ask where he is unless in the course of the sentence. And there the answer would be if, if you are required to do so. Uh, the answer will be the farmers will not get quality milk un, uh, unless they feed their animals well. Even number four can be constructed having a lens in the middle and the answer for that case would be Chantel will not attend the party unless, unless she receives an invitation card. Very good. We have a look at the last example and this one is if the learners dodge this lesson the teacher will get annoyed with them. Okay. Yes, unless there analyze the condition and then the result if the learners dodge this lesson the teacher will get annoyed with them meaning uh -huh, use unless there so when you use unless there you it will bring a negative there unless the learners dodge this lesson yes the teacher will not get annoyed with them meaning if the learners don't dodge this lesson the teacher will not get annoyed with them if the learners dodge this lesson the teacher will get annoyed with them is unless unless the learners dodge this lesson the teacher will not get annoyed with them that is our answer i hope you have taken not of that. At this point, uh, dear candidates, I appeal to you to write neatly. I know you're going to download this work. You need to write neatly. You must write neatly after downloading this exercise. Remember, we are using our activity book. We are using our activity book write our work write neatly stay home and stay safe till next time i'm odysseus bakuma